This is one of my favorite quotes that ever existed, uh, basically because these were one of the first things I was really obsessed with when I was a kid. Still am a bit. And as well, it's got music in it, and I absolutely love music. And when I was a kid, when I was really small, I used to wake up really early. And I used to tiptoe downstairs really gracefully, because I'm really graceful. <laughs> and um, that's true. And uh, I used to go and get the dog out, and I used to watch videos, these like animal videos. My dad used to have this VHS wildlife collection with like, um, I don't know, National Geographic, they were like green with, uh, with yellow writing and so on. And they had a picture of the animal that the video was on, on the front of the cover. And I, used, I watched them all, all of them. A million times I watched them, except one, because it used to really scare me. And one day I decided, no, I'm old enough, it's going to be fine, and I'm not going to be scared anymore, I'm just going to you know, take this video out and I'm going to watch it. And this video kind of looked like that. And um, I fell in love. Ten seconds, two minutes in, completely hooked. Pointless. You could have done anything. I would have been just there. And the idea of like watching a shark and just looking at it swim, to me, they are absolutely perfect. And I watched this video over and over and over again, okay? We had no internet, so you know, if I wanted to watch it, I just had to rewind, play, rewind, play, rewind, play. And uh, by the time I got to about 10 years of age, the only thing I wanted to do in my life, the only thing ever I wanted to do was swim with a great white shark. That's all I wanted to do. And I could have just easily popped off at that point. And I think the eyes of a shark are fantastic. Um, they, for me, they are some of the most beautiful things because everybody looks at them and goes, oh, it's a black hole, there's nothing there. They don't feel anything, they don't see anything, they don't like anything, they don't do anything. It's really not true. It is not true at all. Um, great white sharks have like a layer of cells around the outside of their eyes and it becomes like this blue ring of fire. I really like Johnny Cash as well. <laughs> and um, so, you know, it lights up their faces when you shine a light onto it, kind of like cat's eyes do, you shine a light onto it and all of a sudden it just reflects back. They do exactly the same thing. And it looks a lot more fantastic to me than what people usually think it is. And just before they're about to sort of attack their prey, they close their eyes. And mostly they do it because, you know, the eyes are really, really vulnerable and they don't want to damage them, obviously, but they completely trust what they're going towards, so much so that they can close their eyes and know they're going to get there. They know what they've worked towards, they know what they're doing, and they're confident that they're going to achieve it. So they just keep swimming. And when I was 21, I bought myself a present, and I went to South Africa, and I spent six weeks in South Africa diving six days a week, eight hours a day with great whites. And for me, they're absolutely flawless. I mean, they are completely, completely perfect. They're immune to most diseases, they're strong, they're streamlined, they're adapted to where they live in. They're absolutely fantastic. And they've survived hundreds of millions of years. They were the first thing I was obsessed about, you know, my first passion, the first light in my soul. And what's really nice is like, when you find something beautiful in your head, it makes music. And today, that's what I'm here to talk about, how we can make music within the forensic structure in Malta. And I've always really liked weird stuff. Not like illegal weird, but you know, weird. And uh, my mom likes weird stuff as well. She used to like watching these like cold cases, these you know old videos where they have a 10-year-old case and they rehash it with actors. And then she used to like watching these plastic surgery videos as well where they hack into people's noses with a little hammer and thing. But anyway, I used to really like watching the cold case videos, like videos, I like had internet and TV, um, cold case programs with And I thought, ah, you know what, I could, I could really do that. I could, I could, I could find stuff. And um, I decided that I got really like, you know, into it. You know, I really liked watching CSI then and Criminal Minds. And I thought, yes, it's a really good idea. I thought, you know, um, I like the idea that you sort of, you look for something and it tells a story and Somebody somewhere has done something wrong, and you are going to help to try and make it right. And life isn't quite like that, but anyway. So I applied for my master's, and I came back when I was 24, you know, all like fresh as a daisy, really naive. And um, I came back full of ideas. Let's do this, let's fix that, we can do this, let's try this, how about we do that, how about I try this? 
And it started to sort of dawn on me. People would call me names, belittle me, patronize me, you know, just for being new, younger, and different. Not necessarily because I was bad at what I did, but because I could have posed a threat to their professionality. So slowly, slowly, I started to realize that the system that we have forensic structure-wise in Malta, it's not very movable. It's not a shock. Sharks don't stop moving. They have to keep moving, because if they don't keep moving, they can't pump water over their gills, which means they get no oxygen. So they start to suffocate if they don't move. And that's what we're doing to our forensic structure. We're suffocating it. Currently, um, it's got no speed, it has no grace, it's, it's full of like these semi-qualified, overworked, underpaid people who work as much as possible, but as fragmentally as possible. So, for example, right now in Malta, our system works, there's a crime, police go in, and the police are on the um, detection, inspection, questioning side of the equation and the magistrates get called in if it's a magisterial inquiry, which could be an hour, an hour and a half later. And let's, you know, have a, an imaginary case. So let's say there's a policeman, and he's tried to strangle his wife one morning after breakfast with a mobile phone charger cord. Great, okay. And the police get called in to investigate the policeman who tried to strangle his wife with a mobile phone charger cord. So, that's already a little bit of an issue because the police are on the prosecution side. So they're sitting in a very, very subjective seat because it's one of their own who's done something wrong. And the investigation and questioning is carried out by men, policemen, dressed as they would be in their usual uniform, questioning this woman who's in hospital, um, still you know, suffering from oxygen death, effectively, and asking her questions like, so what did you do to start this off? How, why, why did... And it sounds a bit mean, yes, but you can't really blame them because they're sitting in a very subjective seat. And if we get new people in, sort of shake up the arrangement, to make it less likely that the inspector, who's a friend of this guy who tried to strangle his wife, opens up, an evidence bag with a mobile phone in it, just to check if the mobile phone is clean. If we inject fresh blood, excuse the pun, into the equation, then we run less risk of corruption and less risk of coercion in the system, and we get to keep the system moving. Now, the system also requires strength. Sharks are hugely strong animals. I mean, female sharks are basically two tons of muscle. And you need people with strength to be able to um, work inside the system. I've been hit on by little, tiny little men, uh, just before, <laughs> most of them are tiny, um, just before, you know, I've walked into court to try and put them away. Serial killers, people offering me checks. And you don't take them, because if I had taken them, I probably wouldn't be standing here, I might be on a beach somewhere. But <laughs> I wouldn't be, be able to sleep either. And the idea is that with that strength, you have a sort of quiet confidence. Not that I'm very quiet either, but still. And it's an idea that what you're doing is correct, and you're doing it the right way, and this is the way it should be done. And we need people who have that strength of character. Without that strength of character, it's much easier to say, oh, everyone's doing it, I don't do it as well. It's fine, it doesn't matter. But in order to do this job, you need that integral human asset. So you need to give new people a chance, but you need that strength and you need to train them well. We also need a forensic system that's independent. Sharks are very independent. They go on their own, wherever they want. Sometimes they come with a partner because it gets a bit lonely. But most of the time, they're completely on their own. The only time they're not on their own is when they have a common goal. And a couple of hours before I left my flight to South Africa, this happened. Basically, a whale carcass sort of flowed into shore, maybe a kilometer out, and all these sharks started coming in from everywhere. Everywhere. Big ones, little ones, different ones. Everyone was coming in. And nobody was a hassle to anybody else. And there was an order. So the big sharks go in first, and they eat, and they take what they want, and then the little ones come in. And if Joey the shark came in a bit late, because he was about 10 kilometers away, and it took him a while to come, then 
you know, a little shock would go, oh, yeah, sorry, off to you. And Joey would eat, and then the little shock would go in. And everybody was happy, everybody queued up, like in Malta, exactly. <laughs> and um, after that, after everybody ate and everybody was happy because there was enough for everyone, then all these shocks just went into some kind of food coma, and nobody was threatening anybody else. And if we have a system that's like that, if we have a system that's independent, that works away from the government, is not a government entity, is not a police entity, but where you have a lot of individual, independent professionals working under one roof, so the crime scene court expert can elevate their fingerprint evidence, elevate, 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 elevate their blood spatter evidence, okay, take photos, do what they need to do, and go back, and behind door number one, there's a toxicologist. Behind door number two, there's the fingerprint expert. Behind door number three, and everybody is working independently to the same goal. They're all going in one direction, but they're working independently of a government entity, and you run a lot less risk of corruption that way. And that makes the system a lot less likely to fail, and a lot less risk of contamination of evidence. Charles Darwin used to say, he used to say once he said it, um, he said, it's not the strongest species that survives, and it's not the most intelligent either. It's the one that adapts the best to change. And when I started working in Malta, it became really obvious to me how the system we currently have in place is not adapted to the society that we live in. It's a system that lives off of teachings of people from one generation to the next. It's not a place where there's constant change and constant movement. It's not a shock. And for us to be able to keep moving forward as a nation, we need to keep pushing fresh thoughts into this country, keep pushing new people into the talent pool, and be able to adapt our crime scene protocol so that we can do the best that we can with it. Now, sharks are in grave danger of extinction, mostly because we kill about 100 million a year just for shark fin soup. It's wasteful and it puts a lot of pressure on them as a species because they take ages to reach reproductive age. And even when they do, they have one, maybe two pups. And we're putting too much pressure on our forensic structure as well to deliver. We're not giving it the manpower, we're not giving it the tools, and we're gonna create a malfunctioning system like this. And we are going to end up with a massive brain drain if we keep pushing forwards like this. Most fish can swim forwards and backwards, but sharks can only swim forwards. And that's the idea with an entity. You don't stop, you never give up, and you just keep using your strengths to your advantages. Thank you.